Like Spiral Saber. Where's that coming from? Where's that coming out of? Christopher Kamen Lee, where is the Spiral Saber coming out of? <laughs> 5,000 guys, we did it. 5,000 subscribers. I can't believe, you know, months ago when I originally like kind of set this little this little bar for myself. I was like, how long is this actually going to take? I can't believe we actually did it. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. I, I'm very happy that uh, that you guys like the content. I'm very happy that you guys like the videos. And we're going to do the giveaway. So as promised, I am giving away my Funko Pop Ultra Zord. I'm going to leave this for the end of the video to announce the winner. So make sure that you check out the whole thing so you know who won. It might be you. But in any case, if you're new to the channel, my name is Robbie. You're watching Geek Level Asian. And welcome. Today I wanted to talk about episode 3 of Power Rangers Dino Fury, but before I do, make sure that you like this video so that it can be put in front of other Power Ranger fans just like you. So, like I did in the last video, basically I'm gonna put this into categories, and the first category is gonna be things I like, the second category is things we learn, and then the last one is gonna be things we still don't know. Notice, take notice, that there is no things that I didn't think worked or that I didn't like. I gotta say, because there just wasn't a lot about this episode, if anything, that I can think of that I that I didn't like. And I think that that's a great place to start. So it's official. We are on episode 3, and it has kept my attention to the point where I think the episodes are getting better and better. Unlike Beast Morphers, again, I've said this before, it started out really strong, and then I kind of just lost interest more and more and more until they started bringing in the RPM storyline and Dr. K and everything in towards the end of the second season. That's when I kind of came back on, which really, I, I basically lost the entire middle of the show. And I feel like that's why they actually did the whole RPM thing, but that's beside the point. So things I like, and I mentioned this a little bit before, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I feel like the score of Power Rangers Dino Fury is different than any other score that we've gotten in the past. Now, the specific thing that I'm going to mention, which has to do with the score, is being able to portray emotion in a kid's show. It's not easy to do, and it's not often done well if they try it. I think a show that does it really well is a show like Avatar The Last Airbender. I mean, and, you know, they did also Voltron Legendary Defender. They're just masters at that, and part of that is the score. When we see... This episode opens up with Zato speaking to his mother, and obviously, I mean, I, I can ima I don't know how long people from Rafcon live, but I can imagine that she's not alive anymore. And during these scenes, you know, he's definitely feeling this sense of loneliness because not only is he living in a different time, he's on a different planet, he doesn't know if anybody's alive, X, Y, Z. That's kind of like what this whole episode's about. When he's speaking to Amelia, when he's speaking to Zolan, and he, you, you kind of get this, you kind of feel what he's feeling. And part of it is the acting, part of it is the writing, but part of it is the score. I think if you took the acting and writing and put a different soundtrack or score or whatever you want to call it to this episode i i personally speaking for myself wouldn't feel it as much because i am i am a musician myself and i truly believe that music can absolutely change the tone of a scene it's not just the acting it's not just the performance that's being given and that's something that i think is being done very well in power rangers dino fury so again shout out to again the writers the actors but also the music to this season. And to compare it, I mean, if you think about it, there are other Rangers in the past in previous seasons where they are experiencing a similar type of thing in their life. And again, it's not the acting, it's not the writing, I think it's the music. Like for instance, when when Ivan from Dino Charge finds out that, you know, he's basically in a different time, I don't really feel bad for him. And and Orion in Super Mega Force, you know, his entire planet I, I think was mass genocide did if you want to that's the word uh, if that is a word uh, now he's on earth I don't feel sorry for Orion and it, it's possible it's they just didn't give those types of scenes or didn't write those scenes in and it might just be that as well but I, I just feel like the tonality of Dino Fury has been different than other seasons. That's my point. So now I was almost certain that we were going to see Izzy and Javi in this episode. I thought episode three is where they were going to come in and they did it. And you know what? I'm actually glad about that. Hang on a sec. It's not because I don't want to see those characters or I don't like those characters. I haven't even seen them yet. How can I not like them? It's because we're getting more development and establishment of these three characters that we are already introduced to. And I like that because I feel like that's going to make me as an audience member and a fan 
care about them more. I'm not saying more than the other Rangers that are going to be introduced, but I feel like just care about them as characters more. I think when you introduce everybody in the beginning, it's tough. It's tough for us to really latch on to somebody because we just don't know them enough. I like that we've had now three episodes getting to know these three people. I am still very much looking forward to seeing who Javi and Izzy are and what they're like. Again, I, I do want to meet those characters, but I, I am glad that the pacing of this show is being done in a more mature way. So now, this has to do with me as a person, uh, specifically. Ali, as we know, is the one who thinks basically everything has a logical explanation or he needs evidence. So he's complete opposites with Amelia, who believes in paranormal and, you know, that type of stuff. So they go to this fortune teller. I loved the scene where he basically just proves that the fortune teller is a fraud for two reasons. One, we get a jokey romance type of situation and who knows what's gonna happen with that at a later time we don't know yet uh, but mainly because what he did is very much something that I would do and that might make me sound like a skeptic or you know someone who might be a little cynical but it just reminded me of me and uh, and I, I thought that scene was really funny because it was relatable but again the emotional part then I felt bad when Zeta was like I need some time to myself I was like ooh I felt that. I mean, the only situation in Power Rangers that's coming to mind is when Kit really dumped Tommy through a letter and it was read out loud in front of him and all of his friends. And I know in the pink comic they gave some context to that. I, I know, guys, I know. So things we learn. This isn't totally specific to Dino Fury. They do this a little bit in certain seasons, but Zato uses a boost key without being morphed. I thought that was interesting. So basically you don't have to be morphed to use the boost key powers. I always think it, I, I mean, maybe it's just me. It might, it might just possibly be me, but I always think it's interesting when, you know, an, an, an unmorphed ranger can like pull out a weapon or pull out something that they use when they're morphed. It's like, where did that come from? Because I always figured like when they're morphed, they have the ability to call upon weapons in a specific way. I mean, Beast Morphers gave the most illustrated type of explanation to that. But, you know, I'm talking about like every season, all the other seasons. Like Spiral Saber. Where's that coming from? Where's that coming out of? Christopher Kamen Lee, where is the Spiral Saber coming out of? Another thing that we got to see in this episode was where the Rangers are storing their Sporex. And it's funny because, you know, we I already mentioned that Void Knight has this little like easy bake oven little thing. And the Rangers kind of have like a Ghostbusters containment unit. When the light is green, the trap is clean. And I have a feeling just like in Ghostbusters, there will be a time where that device is either going to get disrupted, going to get attacked. It's going to break somehow and the Sporex are going to get out. I have a feeling that's going to happen. If it doesn't, writers, you know, I would like some writing credit. So now that we're on episode three and they've been painting the picture of who these characters are, two characters that I'm actually very surprised at who they're going to play in the show is Jane and Jayborg. I thought Jane was going to be more like Devin's father in Beast Morphers and Scott's father in in RPM. Kind of like, you know, they're, they're good guys, but sometimes they're an antagonist or they make the Rangers' lives harder without meaning to. I thought that Jane... I guess because, you know, she's the the, the CEO or the, the, the boss of Buzz Blast, I thought that she was going to somehow make Amelia's life harder, but it seems like her and Jay Borg are really just there for comic relief. You know, we see that silly scene of Jane walking around after she sees the fortune teller with a with a blindfold on, she gets on a bus. She could have gotten on a bus to anywhere, and Jay Borg gets her foot stuck in the, the, the cement thing. I mean, I thought... I don't know, I just kind of thought that they were going to have more of a role. Maybe they will in future episodes. So another thing that I think is interesting that has been consistent between the these first three episodes is that we're getting morphs that are not part of a morphing sequence. I think it's happened in every episode so far. And again, that's not specific to Dino Fury. There are other seasons where that happens. Not very often, but it happens. But like, I feel like in this season, in this story, we're seeing it more often. I think they're trying to, basically what I'm saying is I think they're trying to make it more of a regular thing where there will be, of course, a big morphing sequence, maybe like three quarters of the way into the show, but they're making it like a regular thing. Like we could, we don't have to do that every time. And if you watch other shows, like if you watch Sentai especially, they don't do it always. We are getting a ton of Sentai footage. I haven't really done a, a comparison, 
but it seems to me like most of the Zord footage, if not all of it, is all Sentai footage. And I totally understand that because, guys, it's CGI. Why hire a bunch of, you know, 3D artists to redo scenes that don't have American actors in it? Like, just, just use the footage. And I remember in Real Soldier when they were fighting the giant Medusa nipples when they cut out the cement in the street and they used it to cover the 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 medusa nipples it was ridiculous then it, that that move was as ridiculous then as it is now but hey it worked something i'm not totally a fan of and this is not specific to dino fury again this is not about the episode it's really just about power ranger seasons where not all the zords really make sense on their own like these zords are definitely cooler than, let's say, Zeo. I mean, in Zeo, the yellow and pink Zords couldn't even roll on their own. They needed to be dragged by chains. So these are cooler than that, but I don't really love when the Megazord is made of, like, one awesome Zord, and then the other ones are kind of just, like, attachments. Like, and you could consider the original Mighty Morphin Megazord attachments, but, but at least they made the full limb, you know? They were the arms, they were the legs. In seasons like this, and in like, uh, I, like Dino Charge is another perfect example that also uses a T-Rex as like the main, the main like body. It already is really the Zord. You're kind of just taking the pink, the blue, the black, the green, whatever, you, whatever they are. And you're kind of just attaching it to the main one. I'm not a huge fan of that because it just kind of makes the other ones seem not as important. Because, and this is something about me. Zord fights, I skip a lot. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I'll just, like, kind of skip and just see what happens. Because for many years in Power Rangers, the Zord fights kind of always ended the same. Uh, and they were basically, you know, I, I call it the Moon Tiara magic. Or, you know, th that's basically what happened in, uh, in Mighty Morphin. There's always just, like, the last slash, and that's pretty much it, right? It doesn't really matter what happens. What do you do? Do you skip the Zord fights, or do you watch them? If there's anything that you do skip, what do you normally skip? So finally, let's go over things that we still don't know. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but we don't know when Javi and Izzy are coming. Probably in Episode 4. Could be wrong, maybe. And what I'm super curious about is, are they already Rangers? Because... According to Zato and Zolon, the keys and the powers from the original Knights of Rafcon are gone, or they've been gone for quite a long time and they've been lost. Maybe the keys were passed down generation to generation, or they found them somewhere else. Are they already rangers? Because in Real Soldier, that's how it was. They were already training as rangers, and then they kind of meet up and make a team. Are they going to meet these three in the neighborhood, basically, and, and become rangers by proving themselves somehow? I don't know, super curious to see how that's going to play out. And now this is the adult in me speaking, but like Zolon, you have all this technology, you've been on this earth for what, 60 million years? What have you been doing about that? You, like, you can't find the keys? You've had 60 million years to find the keys. You can teleport people, you can receive alien communication but you can't find the keys. Now, my final one is just like, kind of like a funny one. How old is everybody? I, I know that Zato is supposed to be really old, but like, Amelia and Ollie, they're not teenagers, cause they, they're definitely not in high school. I guess they're out of college? Cause Amelia has a job, a pretty good one. Ollie doesn't seem to have a job and that's fine. He, it seems like he works with his mom, but I'm just curious, like, are they supposed to be like mid twenties, I guess? So that's it guys, we're here. Let's give this thing away. So, I want to thank everybody first for entering. I, I hope it's more that you like the videos rather than winning this, because there's only one of these. But uh, I want to, again, thank you all for watching and subscribing. It means everything to me, because this is what I love to do. Uh, but yeah, let's do it. And the winner is... Paul... I don't know how to say your last name. Muij Man? Paul Muij Man? Muij Man? Uh, congratulations on winning the Funko... Ultra Zord. Everyone say congratulations to uh, to Paul. Uh, I should stop banging on this because I don't want to bend it. But now that that giveaway is over, is there something else that you guys would even want? Should we make a 10,000 subscriber giveaway? Let me know in the comments. Also, please let me know what your thoughts are on episode 3 of Power Rangers Dino Fury. Or if you have any questions or if you have any theories, please leave them down in the comments. One of them is, I, I'm seeing a lot of rumblings about this is people are saying, well, it seems like Amelia and Ollie might have something, but people are also saying that Amelia and Zato might have something. What I'm surprised about is, why are we leaving out maybe Zato and Ollie? And if you like this video and you want to keep up with my Power Rangers Super Sentai Tokusatsu, all my geeky stuff, 
please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. You could also follow me on Instagram, not Facebook because I don't have one. Uh, Instagram, I'm on Snapchat, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on TikTok now, and I've been using TikTok quite a bit. So if you're not on TikTok, make sure to join. That's it, everybody. May the power protect you.